It seemed to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. So said Elton John about Marilyn Monroe, Princess Diana, the list goes on. But John was bigger than a mere candle. It seemed to me he lived his life like an oil rig flare stuck in a North Sea gale. Like an oil rig, he drew on huge reserves of energy, was physically quite squat, and thanks to his prodigious whiskey intake, helped prop up the economy of Scotland. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did, continued Elton. And it's no exaggeration to say that Scotland's vast reserves of oil and gas would burn out long before John's legend is ever forgotten. Exaggeration? Possibly. Sentimental nonsense? Again, unwise to rule it out. But there is broad agreement that John was good. The former BBC television centre. John had a real appetite for this donut-shaped building and snaffled his way along the corridors, gorging on the opportunity as he chomped his way to the top. His big break, or mouthful, coming in 1985 with the BBC's getaway. And it needn't cost you a king's ransom. Consisting largely of John in teeming holiday resorts, sampling cooked breakfasts in blazing sunshine, the show was, like the man himself, cheap and cheerful. A great show. Terrible reviews. Saw it cancelled before the end of its run. But it alerted the BBC's early warning system to John's talent. And he was now a big fat blip on their radar. This led to what John called his golden period. A veritable roll call of Britain's best loved telly. Scotland's strongest man. Cash chaser. Britain's holiest him. Fly tip squad. Britain by balloon. Gibraltar CID. Which is why, in 2012, he was named host of new magazine show This Time, delighting us all with puns about hedgehogs being prickly. Prickly customers. <laughs> John Baskell, what was he like? Oh, what are you like? Yes, it seemed to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. The Life of John Baskell by Alan Partridge. Now, while Telly John was larger than life, Private John devoted himself quietly and without fuss or fanfare to his charitable foundation, the John Baskell Foundation. Here to tell us more about the humble work of John's foundation, the John Baskell Foundation, uh, Jenny is joined by John's brave widow, Fran Baskell. Thanks, Alan. Well, Fran, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Such a load of toss. I mean, um, just a bore of it. Too much sirloin to this colon through in the towel. Yeah. What do you got? Well, I've been on the phone to the council about the ramblers crossing your guard. Go on. They say it isn't a public footpath. Hallelujah. It's a public bridleway. What's that when it's about? Well, it's, it's like a public footpath, but horses can use it too. The previous owners didn't mind it, so it fell into public convenience. What? Ooh. I wish you'd fall into a public convenience. You mean public access? Well, I quite like the idea of horses galloping across my view. Yes, because your mind's addled with Catherine Cookson. These riders don't gallop, then. They just sit on their horses eating sandwiches in my garden. You're coming across well. Good. Remember, Good. there's a vacancy here now. Then keep your voice down. His body's barely cold. Fortune favours the bold. The time is upon us. Have you ever seen The, uh, the Devil's Nanny from the film The Omen? No, why? Just you remind me of it, that's uh -huh. all. Um, try saying, have no fear, little one, I am here to protect thee. Have no fear, little one, I am here to protect thee. If you'd knocked on my door at Halloween, I would have fouled my unders. Yes, yeah, and then given you some sweets.